Hello, my name is Liam Shai, and I'm here today with Beatport and Pyramind, participating in a special series on arrangements. Most of the videos in this series are referring to song arrangements, so I'm going to take a slightly different approach and speak to you about arranging your live sets. The way that you construct and arrange your live or DJ set is just as important as how a song is arranged. But here, you have the power to adapt the original arrangement of each song and make it into your own. How you cut, edit, and piece the set together will reflect the story that you want to tell and help you stand apart as a DJ and live performer. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into an example Ableton set. This is a set that I've used in the past to DJ for electro and breakbeat shows. Now the first thing that we should take a look at here is how I've cut up and organized my songs. So as you can see here, these are my songs. And over here, these are different things like loops, vocal chops, FX, and dummy clips. But we're really gonna focus on this side today. So here I've got deck A and deck B. And each deck is duplicated just in the same way as you would burn a song playlist to two CDs so that you can mix from any song to any other song that's on that particular CD. Ableton functions in much the same way. You can only trigger one clip or one song at a time on each channel. So in order to be able to maximize how much we can mix, we have to duplicate everything so that we have infinite mix possibilities. Now, with each song, I've set it up so that it's very clear and easy to understand what the song title is and where in the arrangement we're going to trigger playback. So I start by putting the full song at the top. So this song is called Acid Rocks, this is one of my tracks. And as you can see, we just start playback right from the beginning. Now, sometimes that can be useful, but most often you're probably going to want to start playback somewhere into the song, into what I call the meat of the track, or the heart of the track. Perhaps this is even the first drop. It's really up to you. But if I click here, you can see that I've got my playhead starting somewhere in the middle. And when I press play, now we can hear that we're starting in a section where the beat's really going. Now this is very important because as the DJ and as the audio guide for the night, it's really up to you to decide when the beat goes, when the beat drops, when you have a break, when you wanna really keep the dance floor going. You have a lot of power and a lot of control, especially when you come into Ableton Live and you're getting away from just simple playback on a vinyl or CD system. By adding these complex cue points or sections that you're breaking out of your track, it really almost allows you to remix this track live in a way that suits what you're trying to communicate as an artist. So as you can see here, if I trigger the next clip, we go out into the break section. Now this could be useful if you need to give the audience a break. Loud and noisy, going crazy. But, I'm not likely to be impressed by the same thing over and over again. These long breaks can sometimes over and over again. Over lose the crowd. Over again. Over now, if it goes into a build-up section, over over that's very powerful for your arrangement. And it might be useful to let that play out. As the tension builds, so should the energy on the dance floor. It's sort of a push and pull, a tension and a release. Loud and noisy. Tension, tension, tension. Crazy. Dramatic effect. I'm a little bit afraid that it might sound noisy to you. Bring it back. And now, another build. So, sort of an old school trick there. But the point is, 
you want to be able to have control. Just because this particular arrangement worked when I was writing the track doesn't mean that you as the DJ or performer necessarily want to follow that same arrangement. So now I triggered into the end loop and I did it seamlessly because I've got my global quantization up here. So every clip that I trigger is going to quantize based on the value that I've got set. So I've currently got it set to quarter notes. If you want to make it really safe, you can set it to one bar. If you want to be a little bit more dangerous, you can do eighth notes or sixteenth notes. So just to give you an example, if I have this set to sixteenth notes, it allows me to trigger and it'll quantize when the clip plays to the nearest sixteenth note. However, if I set it to a bar, then it's going to flash and it's going to wait until the bar based on the metronome here. So it's very important to keep in mind. I find that by organizing my tracks in this style, it allows me to have enough choices, but not too many choices. I've experimented in the past with breaking up my track into 8 or 10 or 12 sections. And while that can be really powerful to have more choices, it can also be a bit more difficult to navigate. So I think it is important to have creativity through limitations. Break your track out into like the verse section, the chorus section, the breakdown section, um, in a way that makes sense, that allows you to quickly jump to certain sections of the song that are relevant. Um, and as you can see, I've got my red box here, which is representing my APC 40 grid. So I've got that grouped exactly in uh, five scenes because that's how I can, that's what I can see on my uh, light up display. So I don't actually even need to look at the computer to navigate. And then if I use my arrows on my APC 40 to navigate down, I've got a blank row of scenes here, which gives me a visual cue that I'm going to the next track. And now I can go down here and go to the next track trigger playback there, jump to the meat section, jump to another section, and when I'm ready to mix out, go to the end loop. So I currently have everything playing back at 130 beats per minute, as you can see by my global BPM here. But what do you do if you want to have a BPM variation in your track? Well, sometimes I like to play things a little bit slower, glitch hop, moombatone. Now, over here, I've set this up with my scene launch buttons to actually send a control message to my global BPM to change the BPM. And for this particular transition, I've decided to go in steps of 5 BPM at a time. So from 130 to 125 to 120 to 110, sort of into that Moomba style. And I found that by going at 5 BPM increments, it's kind of... Um, dramatic enough to be noticeable, but smooth enough that it's not jarring. It's noticeable in a good way. So just to give you an example here, if I'm playing back this track, and I decide, okay, I'm ready to start going into 125, so I'll trigger the loop that I'm gonna mix into. And then I'll use my scene launch buttons and I'll slowly start fading out track two, or deck A2, and allow deck B to take over. And now suddenly I'm at 110, and I can trigger Dylan Francis.
I'd very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool, and until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like, the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really helped me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.